live. Hi, it's me, Jennifer from Little Metal Foxes with Julia, also from Little Metal Foxes. <laughs> so we're pretty happy today. We're going to be talking about um, solder pads and uh, solder surfaces and things that we like and give you some tips and tricks on mm -hmm. um, using solder pads and solder surfaces in ways that we like to use them. Hi, Chris. How are you? And um, I know you've got some good solder tips too, mm -hmm. but we're going to be talking about like the surfaces and bricks and pads and um, what we usually use uh, that make our lives easier. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it'll help you too. Um, I guess there's lots of surfaces out there that people use and it can be a little overwhelming when you're sort of looking, not knowing what works best for soldering. Right. <laughs> and, like trying to just, you know, what's the least expensive? What's kind of the most all purpose, right? Like the general purpose flower of soldering surfaces, we will tell you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So there's some um, uh, misnomers out there about some of the surfaces and um, there are some things that you want to avoid and there's some things that are really great. Um, so hopefully we can sort of talk to you about some of those. So for... Um, for my solder counter, I have down uh, some of the um, Silcor. Uh, mm -hmm. Their ceramic like the counter. Yeah, stuff. their ceramic. Um, well, it's a ceramic pad, mm -hmm. and it's heat absorbing. But the Silcor are nice because they have little feet on them. And they lift them up a little bit, and you can get them in six by six or six by twelve. But they're a ceramic, and I use that underneath my solder right pads like a big old solder rate pad like that. Um, the this, solder is a, this is a 12 by 12 inch. They come as small as six by six. Yeah. Um, so you, you know, and actually the 12 by 12 is, is a little big because I like to be able to rotate my work and the 12 by 12 tends to like bang into the ventilation. I use this for my surface. So I have two of these side by side just to protect my- So it's underneath yeah, and then is... you have something that rotates on top. Yes. So this yes. is my solder area. So I just use two of these on top of the Silcor blocks and it lifts everything off the counter and keeps everything nice and cool. So I don't have to worry about the heat transmitting through the board. Um, hello, hi everybody. Thanks for joining us, hello. Um, so the solderite pads are kind of a um, uh, plaster board mm -hmm. that are heat reflective, which is really nice. And generally they're a really good surface to work on. Um, for all-purpose stuff. Um, they are soft enough, too, that you can push, with some effort, you can push T-pins into them. And they do make two different kinds, one softer than the other. But even the softer one is still pretty hard, Yeah. right? I mean, you still have to work to push the t But you can push the T-pins in, yeah. and that's nice for stabilizing. Yeah. Things. So if you're going to be doing some production work that you need to sort of set things up in a way that you're going to be doing repeated work or pin things in or press things into the board a little bit. You can actually do that with the softer ones and get things sort of laid out. Um, sometimes I'll do that with the softer ones because I can actually uh, carve a little notch if I need mm -hmm. to do a production line where my jump rings are standing up mm -hmm. rather than laying down. And I can set my jump rings up and, and do a whole bunch of them at once. So it makes it a little bit easier. Um, one of the other things that I really like about the solder pads, the, you know, a nice good solder pad like this is I'll always keep a clean side mm -hmm. because this side, if you keep it completely clear of flux and solder and everything else, anytime you have a, a flat surface that you're worried about getting solder and flux and everything on, having one board that's just for that makes a huge difference because if you've got a board that you've been using, that's like this, that may have some flux. Or look flux. at the other side. Yeah. This side, the flux will eat into it and make pits in it, and so then it's not totally flat. And right. you can sort of kind of recondition them, but if you need a flat yeah. area to lay something out, having one side pristine is good. Yeah. And what's the other reason you really need it to be pristine? For fusing. So if you're doing fusing, you don't want any flux on the board. So the, yeah. if you look closely at this side, you can see all the little rings. <laughs> The marks yeah. where I was using some yeah. fine silver rings. So, yeah. So I, I always have like at least one um, six by six that's like pristine. Right. That I don't use any flux on, that I don't use like if I if it gets any solder and stuff. I'm just a little bit careful about it. Um, if I do happen to get something on it, um, if I'm working with a pristine board and it's got a little bit of um, little uh, remnants or shadows of something that happened before, I'll take my... Um, 
actually, I'll take something nice and flat, like a ruler, and just do a little bit of uh, erasing and, mm -hmm. and scrape it off mm -hmm. like that. And that way, if there was any flux or any solder or anything like that on the board, I can just right. scrape it right off. And I've got a pristine board that's nice and clean. So I, I usually will keep these really clean and even use a, a brush mm -hmm. if I'm doing something where I really have to have a pristine surface. Um, the other thing that I like about the solderite boards is that if you've got a graphite pencil, you can lay out stuff on the board uh, using either a graphite pencil or a sharpie and make you know your squares um, and mark things where you need things so that way when you're laying things out um, if you've got a like a use it's a like T-square yeah. yeah you can make your own grid or graph on there that Absolutely. gives you the exact dimensions yeah or if you've got something that's something. like a long line of things that you need to solder, mm -hmm. you know, you can actually mark it on the board and use your board to line things up. And it, um, and if it's in, you know, Sharpie, it'll usually burn off as you are um, uh, working. Working, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so Chris will burn off eventually. Yeah, too. yeah, they both will. Um, and Chris at Lion Punch Forge. Hi, Chris. How are you? We love Chris. Um, he uses a horseshoe rasp to resurface. And th resurfacing the solderite pads, there's there are a couple of really good ways to do that. Um, I know Amy uh, Reeves down at Tacoma Metal Art Studio in Tacoma, Washington. She will, because she has a, a school where she's teaching lots of classes, and the boards just get, you know, overworked yeah. with flux and things like that. When you're so, learning... Even even when you're not, sometimes yeah. if you use too much flux and then when you melt it, it's like yeah. a puddle of glass and it just eats into the board. <laughs> and you end up with that. Yeah. Um, so, but when you have a lot of students that are, you know, in a studio and, you know, these things really are a studio consumable. Yes, yes. Um, But, you know, it's, you hate to do that. And um, if you, you want to make it last as yeah. long as you can, right. even if, you know, there's going to come a point where you, you can't, you know, right. resurface it. So what Amy does is she'll soak them in water. Oh, what a good idea. Overnight. And then she'll, like, give them a good brush down and then set them outside to dry and let them dry really thoroughly before she brings them back in. So if she's had, you know, a, like if she has, like, a break in between quarters, sometimes she'll do that and sort mm -hmm. of um, try and recharge all of her uh, solder pads. And so they get a little lumpy and bumpy when you do that. And something like the uh, the horseshoe rasp or a, a good rasp mm -hmm. should be able to, or uh, drywall sandpaper mm -hmm. is really good or at... Really, really coarse stuff that has yeah. the holes in it. Exactly. So that you can, yeah. So use a dust mask when you do that, mm -hmm. but you can sand those these down with things like that. Um, I have to, now, now I really want to try wetting it and sanding it with the drywall yeah. to see how, if I can, you know, really Scrub it down a little bit. Because yeah. I have reconditioned charcoal blocks that way yeah same way absolutely mm -hmm. so um one of the things a lot of people use uh when they're learning and uh in schools and things are the um the kiln bricks mm -hmm. and kiln bricks are lightweight they're very inexpensive you can get them at, at any of the ceramic supply places they're soft so you can pin things into they're, them they're very soft this is a great solder surface yes. and um, this is great sitting on top of a, you know, a trivet or something for, so you can actually spin it because it's light enough. My to favorite do thing to set it on yeah. is the guts of a lazy Susan. Yeah. And you can get, you know, cut these in half mm -hmm. and then get one of the small ones and actually screw it right into the bottom of the solder brick. What? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can do all kinds of cool stuff to kind of make it your own. But these I've actually used uh, uh, in ways like you have here mm -hmm. to like carve into the uh, kiln bricks to make a Do little depressions. Mm -hmm. That was for some production stuff that I was doing. So I carved little depressions that were all the size of all the little things. Yeah, it's really soft. You can carve it like with the back end of your tweezers. You, you can, can cut can it with a press bread into knife. it with your fingernail. Yeah, it's so soft. So saw or bread knife, yeah. you can cut it really easily. Yeah. So a lot of times people need to like get underneath something to solder. Mm -hmm. You can actually use uh, a file or a hacksaw and cut a notch into it. And that way you can create something like that where you've got an area as your you can heat from different sides mm -hmm. and heat from underneath. Um, and what did you call that? This is a little, I call this a bead kiln because what it is, it's cut. The, the holes were drilled with paddle bits, you know, so I have all the different sizes. It's, of the paddle bits that I drilled in and then I used a hacksaw to cut the sides. So I can set the two halves of a bead on this and then heat from the sides 
um, and the heat will come in through these notches. And then as I rotate it, sitting on my little, you know, guts of a lazy Susan, then I can go all the way around and chase the solder all the way around the bead, but it holds the bead because it's a cupped yeah. depression. So yeah. it works really well. But you can, you can customize the, the solder or the you know, oh, film yeah. bricks any way you want, but they're so lightweight. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, that's K one nice thing K23. K23 yeah. is what you want. Don't get fireplace bricks. No. That's completely different. No. These are heat reflective, uh, much like the solderite boards are. And that's the kind of surface that you want that's going to reflect the heat back onto the piece. Heat absorbing bricks, like charcoal bricks, or like, not charcoal bricks, but... Like, um, like fireplace, fireplace bricks, bricks or kiln bricks. Yeah. Are, ...are really good at holding heat, and that's what they're supposed to do. So they hold onto the heat and warm a house... But mm -hmm. you don't want that with a kiln brick. You want it to keep the heat inside the kiln and not absorb the heat out. So, well, and the other ones like fireplace fire bricks or the bricks that kilns are built out of are too hard. No, um, these are actually a more porous than this. They're, yeah, they're way too hard. You can't cut them. You can't stick your fingernail into them, and you can't easily cut them. Yeah, these are what they use like to build the doors of kilns, like yeah, when they're firing, like, and mm -hmm. then they can cut them and shape them. Yeah. Um, so yeah. But yeah, you can you know pick these up at most of those places, and they are they're really not expensive at all. They're, so I don't know, six eight bucks. A piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I'm not using these, I actually put them along the back of my solder station mm, just to, to reflect yeah. the heat. Yeah, yeah. to Good just idea. protect everything against the wall. Um, so yeah, those work really well. Um, one of the things I know a lot of people are that will confuse the solder surfaces with is an annealing surface. And annealing pans and annealing surfaces generally are very different. Um, so annealing surfaces are usually filled with things like vermiculite and um, uh, pumice, like so. And this one's an annealing pan and it's, you know, will spin and mm -hmm. has like the little, um, it's a little rotisserie on the bottom. <laughs> yes. But usually you're using something like a pumice uh, grain in here or vermiculite or mm -hmm. something that's, you know, a lightweight Vermiculite you can material. get at the garden store, by the yeah. way. Right? Yeah. And pumice. Yeah. And pumice. Yeah. And this is great for annealing, especially bigger stuff. Right. The, the it's problem, not so good for the little stuff. <laughs> no. And it's not great for soldering because um, people will drop solder down in there and then you're trying to anneal and you end up with solder in your annealing pan which is not great. Not good. So I definitely recommend, you know, having a kneeling pan, especially if you're working a little bit larger, it's helpful. But if you don't, they make smaller ones. You can get like a little annealing pan. Mm -hmm. um, but I do most of my annealing just on my, my solder station. On a station. clean, yeah, a clean, <laughs> on the solder clean side surface. of your solderite pan. Because yeah. you just don't want to add flux to it when you're right. annealing it. So a couple of other things that are really helpful that it sort of gets into more uh, more advanced stuff, which is, is always good. Um, and this is one of my go-to surfaces is charcoal. Mm -hmm. um, I love charcoal for so many reasons. And soft charcoal and there's a harder charcoal. This is a harder compressed charcoal mm -hmm. that is almost like a particle board or a ceramic. It's mm -hmm. it's very, uh, very dense and very hard. Um, you this can't one, it's a soft press charcoal. It. You can stick, you know, you can... You can make a mark in it with your fingernail, Absolutely. just like you can on the soft fire brick. This hard charcoal, it's, yeah. it's, you can't, I mean, you can Won't drill bush. into it, but you yeah. can't stick your fingernail into it. And those will last a lot longer. Um, both, uh, all the charcoal surfaces will burn. <laughs> up, eventually. <laughs> they will burn up. So, hello. Um, so, be careful when you're working with the charcoal because it will continue to sort of smolder. Right. If you don't extinguish it and then you come back, this is the hard charcoal block, and then you come back later and you don't extinguish it. That one just got <laughs> burned up and used, but this one was actually an accident. Yeah. You have to extinguish it at the end of your soldering session. And if you don't yeah. extinguish it, it will continue to smolder and it will just yeah. burn itself up. Some people have like a little bucket of water and they just throw it in the bucket mm -hmm. of water and leave it when they're done. Um, I have a spray bottle and I just spray stuff really thoroughly when I'm done. Um, but yeah, be careful because they can, you may not even realize that they're smoldering, but it's a really good idea to make sure that you are, um, just quench it just yeah. as a, as a general studio practice before you leave the studio, yeah. just quench your, your charcoal blocks. Yeah. You don't have to quench the other ones. Yeah. Cause not only, blocks. not only could it 
you know, continue burning, but it may end it could up start a fire. Oh, yeah. So be careful with the charcoal blocks. Um, the uh, soft charcoal blocks. One of the reasons that I like them so much. There's many reasons. Um, they're great for granulation. They're great for filigree. They're great for uh, carving into and using as mm -hmm. a makeshift ingot mold or for casting. Yes. Um, the, uh, the surface is really good for soldering because you can pin things into it, into mm -hmm. the soft one as well. Um, so there's lots of really good uses for the softer charcoal in the studio that you may not have ever even thought of before. But, um, I love it as a, a soldering surface because you can see things really well. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things about the charcoal is as metal heats up, especially any of the carb, uh, the copper alloys, so sterling, copper, brass, bronze, all of those, um, when they get warmer, they want to grab onto uh, a free electron, and usually that's from carbon. We don't have a lot of carbon in our atmosphere, so it'll grab onto something uh, that's, that's randomly available, which is usually oxygen, and you end up getting oxides on the surface of mm -hmm. your metal. But if you're working on something that's made out of charcoal, you're creating- made out of carbon. Made out of carbon. You're introducing something that is a uh, carbon atmosphere mm -hmm. to help keep your metal a little bit cleaner. Mm -hmm. So this works almost, it works beautifully when you're doing like really delicate detail work for a little bit higher um, contrast. Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing filigree, I really like working on charcoal because I can see what I'm doing really well. And as it starts to, um, you know, you start working on it, it will start to crack and you usually want to bind it together yeah. with a little binding wire just to hold it together. And um, I usually will sand, just use coarse sandpaper and sand it down uh, to make it new. And I'll use it all the way down to the dust for right. just about everything. So you can, I would recommend um, sanding it in water just because then you're not breathing the dust. I mean, it, it's just better not to get yeah. that in your it's lungs. Just a shallow, just a shallow pan of water pan. And, and sand it. Yeah. Um, I have heard, though I've never tried it because I have charcoal blocks, people say that they will take like the natural charcoal like this one. So so these are this is actually like a briquette, right? Now it has to be a briquette that's not infused with anything. Can't be that Kingsford charcoal no. stuff. No, no, no. This has to be like no natural <laughs> hardwood briquettes. So and you can as long as it's just plain wood, you can use these in, in place of charcoal yeah. blocks. But you can also take broken pieces of charcoal block or broken pieces of natural hardwood charcoal and you can file or rasp that with your hoof rasp and make a charcoal surface yeah. on another block so you could take as you know, a support kiln brick and then you could put a layer of charcoal on it so then you would have the reducing atmosphere and the dark contrast without having to purchase the charcoal block right. or it's a way to use up the yeah, the scraps of the, bits. the scraps of charcoal at the at the end of the well, yeah. of the thing. And I'll like. hold on to my charcoal because I'll use the little bits um, to sort of help support pieces while I'm trying to solder. Mm -hmm. Sometimes too, because sometimes you need something that's just like you can press into it and and hold it where you need it. So it's just another way to you know support the things that you're trying to solder. Um, uh, the other thing that I have found uh, when I first started working with argentium because I love charcoal so much. Um, is that I would try and solder my argentium and fuse my argentium on charcoal. And guess what, Julia? That doesn't work. It doesn't work. I don't no. I don't know if I work with argentium. I no. never have, so it I don't know anything work. about it. So if you're out Why there not? and you're working with argentium, argentium, um, it prevents it from fusing. Wow, all the carbon? Uh, yes. Nice. <laughs> the carbon okay. prevents argentium from fusing. Good to know. So don't use a charcoal block when you're trying to work with argentium. argentium. It absolutely won't work. So what you want to use instead is either a clean solderite pad or ideally something like the honeycomb, um, the honeycomb uh, uh, ceramic blocks. Ceramic. Yeah, these are ceramic. So these are fantastic. They do, they are brittle because they're all perforated. You can kind of see the can perforations. See Hello, you can kind of see the perforations through it. So it's got tiny holes. They're just exactly the right size for quilt pins. And oh. so I, you can put quilt pins in there or you can put binding wire in there and kind of pin things together. I do that quite often. But this is a great surface for uh, working with argentium. Um, and I find that it's uh, dastardly uh, brittle when you <laughs> if you drop it. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't drop, drop it. <laughs> I like to take, um, I find that the T-pins that I have are just 
they're just a tiny bit smaller than the hole, which mm -hmm. is good because you can get them in and out of the holes. But as a consequence, they, they move a little bit. So I will set my ceramic oh. honeycomb on top of my fire brick and she pin the T pins through into this so that yeah. nothing moves. Smart, smart. Right? So yeah. when I was making the hollow box ring this past weekend, that was one of the tips I was showing my yeah. students in there is that then I could make sure that everything didn't shift even a fraction of a millimeter. Right, yeah. Um, you, these do heat up pretty well too, so you have to be yeah. careful not to lean your hand on them because you can get stung. They 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 do get up the warm heat. up. Yeah, <laughs> they well. they are um, they are heat absorbing, but and and they are slightly heat reflective, and you'll notice they have like a little wavy bits on one side. Right, one side's is, flat, and it's also nice because you can heat from underneath. Yeah. So if you don't use it that way yeah, a lot, but but you yeah. can kind of get heat underneath things a little bit with those two, and that works pretty well. So. Um, really helpful. I like um, that it has one side has waffles. little has waffles, like little indentation. Because <laughs> then, if you've got something that's round and you want it oh. in a particular orientation, like you're trying to solder something onto a half round surface, yeah. you can set it into those little depressions and it stays yeah. put. And they're kind of grooves too. And they're grooves. Oh, the other thing I love about this is that it's the the holes are in are lined up, right? So right. it's again, it's like graph paper. Yeah, you can get things lined up really perfectly by lining it up with the, the yeah. lines of holes absolutely and that'll hold the um uh sharpie marker too yeah so if you're you know making your lines on there with sharpie yeah. marker as a reference that works pretty that well works too. that is one of my favorite tricks that a lot of people are like what do you do when you're like writing on your solder pad and i'm like yeah yeah <laughs> with a pencil <laughs> or a sharpie whatever i've got um so uh, one of the other solder surfaces that uh, that we both have and rarely use is the magnesia blocks. So magnesia blocks are, um, they're the cotton candy, the compressed cotton candy of the jewelry <laughs> world, which um, it's, it's very soft and light. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a, a very old sponge from the 19th century it's that's like, been formed. Or like Oasis, you know, into, like the floral stuff you would. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's super like soft. So it's yeah. super soft. And, so you and can pin into it really easily. You can. And unfortunately, it's a little fuzzy. It's kind of like paper pulp and lint got together and made a solder surface. So I don't use them very much because the, the flux will absolutely start to dissolve them. Right, So right. It just, it like, just right. yeah. It's like water on cotton candy. It is. It's like water on <laughs> cotton candy. And so I I just have never been a, a huge fan of the uh, magnesia blocks. I think um, I've had this one for 20 years. You I probably have had mine that long. One side is completely yeah. pristine and the other side, you know, has some holes in it. And I yeah. still have it in case for some reason I got a wild hair and decided I need yeah. to use it. But I, I prefer the... the and, and the, the I'm afraid to get it wet or, you know, try, you know, sand, solder with it or, or file right. it because Touch it's just, it. it's Look so at it. fuzzy. It's, just... <laughs> it's like, yeah. um, but, um, this, tell us about this, Julia. Uh, I got this, I got this from another jeweler at one point, the edge of it broke away and I used it. This is a garnet block. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it's also oh, a nice. very reflective surface. Yeah. I, I honestly, I think. Very old school. Very old school. So yeah. I think really what happened was. Charcoal, magnesia, and garnet blocks are, you know, what everybody used before we had kiln bricks and before we had the solderite pads, right? Yeah. right? Um, people also used to use asbestos pads back in the day. <laughs> and, of course, they were great because, you know, they were heat resistant, but nobody has those anymore. Yeah. Um, so I think I kind of inherited this from yeah. somebody. And, and these are great surfaces because they're, they're, uh, like a ceramic stone. Right. Um, and you can use things like, um like ceramic, you know, uh, tiles and things like that underneath your solder station to help, you know, protect a surface. Those mm -hmm. work great. Um, the other thing that's great underneath a, a lot of surfaces to protect it is the, um, the bathroom. Uh, oh, the Hardy Backer board. Uh, yeah. The, the backer cement board. tile board. It's the tile board that's, it's, it's the tile board for, it's the backer board for putting tile on in the bathroom so that if it gets wet, it doesn't like just, you know. Yeah. 
and it's <laughs> it's completely fire resistant, apart. fire retardant. Yeah, so it's concrete. It's basically it's concrete. Yeah, board. so a lot of people will use that on their surface, their solder surface, just to protect that and the wall behind. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get that cut at Home Depot. They will mm -hmm. cut it down for you. Um, if you're, it's got score lines in it, so yeah. you can actually, you know, you can you can just put a board against it and break it. it it'll break a little bit unevenly. I yeah. have some pieces, but I forgot to get them out. And you can get smaller pieces, get it down to small enough pieces. For those of you that are working, you know, at home or on a surface that you know you have to use for other things, mm -hmm. you can get a small enough piece and put it inside like a big cookie sheet mm -hmm. or a baking sheet that you can get from like the baking supply places or cooking supply places mm -hmm. that are a little bit bigger and just you know line it with that and then you can put all your solder stuff on there top of it and you've got a nice surface you can you know put away when you're not using it mm -hmm. and pull it out you know when you need it and so if yeah you, if you went to a you know construction site of which there are seven bazillion in seattle and just said are you guys doing the bathrooms yet do you have any <laughs> do you have any scraps of party backer board that i could have they'd be like here that dumpster number three <laughs> help yourself yeah, yeah. so because i mean yeah. you need a piece that's it's really small in comparison to what goes into tiling a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> or just solder in your bathroom. You can... <laughs> but the people um, needing to use yeah. the bathroom might not, might object. That's just too bad. That's just too bad. That's right. Soldering. Um, but yeah, there's lots and lots and lots of options out there. And, you know, depending on, you know, what you're looking at and uh, where you are located, mm -hmm. you may have, you know, other things that are available. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and primarily you want a surface that's going to be clean, that's, you know, uh, a heat reflective surface that is um, not, not flammable. <laughs> and, um, and you can pick up, you know, things like the um, solderite pads uh, from places like, you know, Rio and other jewelry supply mm -hmm. places for not, they're not too terribly mm -hmm. expensive. Um, I really like the 12 by 12 as my, my solder, uh, surface mm -hmm. that I can add, put other things on mm -hmm. and just use it as my safe, uh, backing. And that works great. Um, it's nice and clean and I can use it for a larger soldering if I need to. Um, but, um, that's kind of the, um, oh, Barbara. Hi, Barb. Uh, so, um, so anyway, that's kind of all of our, uh, uh, solder surfaces. There's, there's lots and lots and lots of other things that you can use to assist you in soldering, you know, that are like holding devices or garnet sand or, um, which I have, I have some soldering yeah. sand and I, I've used it. It's a giant mess in my it opinion. Is. <laughs> you have to wet it and, and right. sort of put it and, together. Yeah. But there's, there's things like soldering clay and hold it and all kinds mm. of other things that are out there we'll as far as like post. holding surfaces and things like, you know, um, trays trivets and and the dreaded tripod so um <laughs> i hate the tripod um but i don't know i love it i just was using it this weekend for the hollow box frames okay next week but <laughs> but there's you know all kinds of good things and you may have to experiment sometimes um you may be working on your know, learn to work on the solder right pad and never tried any of these other surfaces they're really not very expensive um, and if you're finding that, you know, you're having a hard time holding something or you're doing something that's, that needs a little bit more, uh, uh, configuration in terms of holding it together with pins or, mm -hmm. or something, you may find that one of the other softer surfaces might work better for mm -hmm. you too. So yeah. So keep an eye out for that. So anyway, yeah. In the comments below, um, you know, be sure to add, you know, we'd love to hear what your go-to solder surface is. So add that to your, um, I don't have enough to the solder surfaces. I really, I need to acquire some more. If you more. can see what's sitting before us, it right. just, I, it goes I mean, on. This, all of the ones we showed you were going <laughs> for all the ones that, that I have in my studio. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's not even, yeah, my studio too. Right. But, I didn't even see Jennifer's stash. No, I have lots. <laughs> but, I don't um, see my stash. Yeah. But this is, you know, it's just a, a little bit, and it does not, it does, seriously, it's not very expensive. And a lot of it is very, very versatile and functional. Mm -hmm. um, and, All of it is yeah. consumable though, right? So, you know, charcoal blocks, relatively speaking for their size, are fairly expensive. But, you know, it's like, just, just own that you're going to use it up yeah. and that you're going to get a new one, right? That's one of the reasons to bind it so that it will last a little bit longer. Yeah. So, and it they, to regulate the heat and to you know, hold it together when, if it cracks. If it cracks. It's a natural it, wood. It's right. a natural wood. Yeah. So, if it yeah. cracks, it'll still work just fine. If it has a crack yeah. in it, it's just, if you're holding it together, then you're not dealing with a whole bunch of little pieces. Right, right. So. But, um, but yeah, most, most places, um, generally you're going to have a ceramics place somewhere in town regardless of where you are you know check around and see and you usually can find the the really good light soft 
kiln bricks. Right, and the they're, they're so, so versatile. Mm -hmm. So versatile. They're just absolutely great. Right. For if all you had was that, oh, that's yeah. all I soldered on for years. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they're great. Um, and they're nice and thick. So they're, yeah. You, you can do a lot with them. Trim them down and make them into tinier surfaces. If you well, and you can, like you said, you can stand them up. So you yeah. can have a couple. So if you're trying to solder something that's kind of big and you have a fairly small torch, you can... Um, you, you can kind of make a little forge, you know, yeah. you can stand them up like this, you know, and add pieces so that this bounces the heat back. So if you're working down here, this is bouncing heat back onto your piece right. and right. it helps, you know, get it hotter faster. Yeah. yeah. And you know, there's, uh, yeah, it's, um, Queen Bead says in the beginning I bought everything and then the longer I saw her, I needed something, my, uh, need my six inch soldering pan. A charcoal, charcoal brick. brick and a solderite board. Yeah. That's I mean, you, you just, mm -hmm. you just find the thing that works best for you, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's kind of how it goes. But, um, but yeah, you know, talk to your friends and, and see. And, um, one of the other things that, that I would definitely recommend that if you are a student or if you're taking classes someplace, take a six inch solderite board with you so you've got your own solder surface and i usually recommend taking like the six inch solderite pad and a charcoal brick the soft ones uh that's the smaller mm -hmm. the smaller size and you know those are yours you don't have to worry about what somebody else did to the solder brick there's not before be, you used it there's not going to be little pieces of solder sitting on there like exactly a little right. piece of easy solder that is yeah. going to be stuck to your yeah. piece i've seen some really terrible things happen because yeah. you know students just sometimes don't know and right. and so you get you know some abuse on some of the materials and mm -hmm. and then you're the next person behind them and then all that ends up on your piece and things go wrong Wrong. So, you know, for a small investment to be able to have your own solder surface in those situations, one, you can set up at your own bench. So if there's mm -hmm. like a designated solder area, you can work at your own bench, set things up and then mm -hmm. take it over to the solder station. And that way it keeps the solder station open longer for other, other students and other people that are using the shared space. So um, that's um, I think that's yep. always a, a good thing for you for and just sort of being polite to the other students that are around. Yep. But yeah, having your own, it's mm -hmm. worth it. You know, it's, it's a couple it. of bucks, just get it. because. Yeah. It's, and then when you're done, quench it before you, you know, pack it up so you, you don't light your kid on fire. <laughs> get on fire as you go to your what car and the back yeah. seat's on fire. No, don't do that. Don't do um, that. But, um, but have something that you can, you know, uh, quench it and put things in if you're tra having to transport it. But anyway, um, but yeah, so... Speaking of, of classes and Speaking things. Of classes and things. I have to get my phone What's out coming up, Julia? To see what's coming up. So we've got. Um, so, oh, uh, Jan's. Yes. Uh, Jan's enameling class is coming up. Well, your yeah. basic engraving class, I think, is almost sold out. I yeah, think there's, there's only like... a couple places left. And the Lion Punch Forge Graver Adapter. Chris is out there someplace. Hi, Chris. Um, so Chris uh, from Lion Punch Forge and Peppy Tools are going to be giving away one of our classes for the Lion Punch Forge Graver Adapter. And if you're interested in doing that, Chris has all the details on his site at Lion Punch Forge. Mm -hmm. So you can check that out and see what the rules are. You have to be following us, Peppy Tools, and Chris. And, um, and Lion Punch Forge. The Lion Punch Forge, yeah, mm -hmm. at Lion Punch Forge. And um, uh, share the post and write in there what classes you'd like us to do. Um, a lot of times we, we've got it planned and coming up, but we can let you know. Um, but we'd love to hear, you know, what kinds of things you would like us to be doing. Um, so Jan is going to be doing her um, uh, two weekend mm -hmm. uh, intro two to enameling. Two consecutive weekends yeah. intro to enameling. And yeah. that's going to be amazing. Yeah, that starts um, on the 7th of August. Yeah, I did have a question that about that class. And I know that some people, especially people that have been doing enamels for a while, are very aware of using lead-free enamels. And that's what Jan is going mm -hmm. to be talking about is lead-free enamels. But wants to make sure that other people know, you know, what the the risk and dangers and all that are of working with a lot of those uh, mm -hmm. alternative materials and old school uh, enamels. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, what else yeah, is coming so she's up? gonna she's gonna talk about. And she knows so much. She's, oh, she's a woman is just a walking encyclopedia of enamel information, and she knows all the other and charming and charming and hilarious. Love her. She's lovely and super organized. Jennifer and I were both in her. Her first yeah. class that she did, which was about the, the tools that you oh. need 
Um, and it, it was great. Yeah. So definitely. Etch in, a, etch in a bag. Queen Bead was asking. Uh, oh, well, well, etch in a bag. Eventually it will. Since we since I just ran it, when was it, last yeah, month or probably something? Probably this winter. Yeah, it'll it usually, I don't know, six months or so. We don't yeah. want it to run too soon. Cause, but yeah, yeah, fun. It was yeah, so it was fun. fun. I sat in on that class and I was like, what? That's it was, great. It was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Um, um, so you have uh, Bezels Made Perfect I do. coming up. Basic Bezels. She will show you all the tricks. So here's the thing. Um, bezels Made Perfect. I, I love having people in there that have already done bezels but are not great at it. And the thing is that bezels are hard. Um, mm -hmm. I really believe that intro to jewelry classes uh, throw really, bezels at yeah. you because they want to weed out the weak. Right. So <laughs> they're, like, they're like, oh, you can't do a simple bezel? You don't need to be in here. Um, and it, it's, it's bezels a cool are trick. It's hard. A cool, it's bezels a cool are hard. Trick. Yes, they are. So um, good but, bezels are hard. Good Crappy bezels, are hard. bezels are very easy to do. It's true. <laughs> um, but um, there, there are a lot of really good tips and tricks for bezels. Mm -hmm. That one, make it your she own. She will show you all of them. You know, making making it from scratch is a big deal, so that you can make the bezel be what you need it to mm -hmm. be, instead of just depending on bezel wire out of a box you know it's just there's so much more to it than that um so customizing bezels and finishing them off to get professional results instead of just you know goat roping the stone into you know <laughs> onto your part um and it's just goat roping yeah the it's stone. like people are like oh you know God, it's like different. quick let's lasso that stone and it's like they get that vessel around it and they're like done time and it's like yeah but you still have to skin and cook the goat um there's a lot of finishing involved with, with goat roping that they don't talk to you about so this is what we're going to do we're going to go over some of the finishing tips and tricks how to make it look perfect solve a lot of problems like those pinholes at the bottom of your solder seam and um, uneven solder and uh, oh god I've got so many tips and tricks for bezels so um, and how to customize them and do um, unique bezels as well. So, so you're, not, you're not trapped into either yeah. just using commercial gallery wire or oh. just using yeah. just flat bezel and yeah. that's it. You know, I know a lot of people choices. that, that use um, like the like just buy the widest bezel wire that they can from you know the the jewelry supply place and they'll use it on you know these big stones and they're like why does it keep melting i can't get it to solder down straight and i'm like because it's only 28 gauge <laughs> you're gonna have to get a heavier piece of fine silver and you know you can make that it's easy to do so um or you can you know buy it a little bit heavier in sheet form mm -hmm. what i know um so simple solution but, um, but yeah, what else? Oh, Studio Sparks. Oh, Studio Sparks is awesome. Julia's doing that one. I'm, I'm, this is a new new thing where I'm doing. Cool. Um, I always feel like August is sort of the doldrums of the summer. You know, it's mm -hmm. like we're not quite back in school yet. And we're not, we're kind of done with summer a little bit. And so I tend to not be in my studio as much. And so I was like, I want to be in my studio more. So I'm going to do, essentially, they're sort of like morning pages, but for jewelers, right? So every day, every weekday for the first four weeks in August, uh, if you sign up, you will get a prompt. You will get a studio spark that will be a suggestion for something for you to go into your studio and make. And then not, not, not a big precious thing, just like experiment with some stuff. And then Wednesdays and Fridays... We will meet up in a live Zoom call and we will talk about what we loved and what we hated. Um, I, I did a sample one and I started doing the sample. I thought, oh, this is going to be fine. And then I got into it and I was like, I'm not loving this. <laughs> By the time I got done with it, I actually liked it much more. But there was a moment where I was like, mm, but I was like, I'm going to push through. Yeah, um, it's just it's really good to have a couple of just exercises that get you thinking, moving, soldering, even if it's something that you don't finish, at least you've got, you know, your torch set up, you've got, right, right. you're you, just, you're, you're in the studio, you're, in you're, doing, it. you're doing stuff, right, you're exactly. in it, and it's making you think and, and helping you sort of, you know, work your way along, um, and, you know, whether it's, you know, taking an old piece of jewelry that completely failed and cutting it apart, and, which is what you did recently, I yes. did that recently, and, and I was like, oh, I had this piece on my bench for years, years, and I hated it, and I'm like, that thing's got to go. She didn't make it, by the way. No, I did not make it. And it was like, mm, I got it in Mexico like 25 years ago. And, um, uh, and it's just been there sitting there staring at me forever. And I'm like... She cut it out. She mm. made it into three more, three other pieces of jewelry. <laughs> two, so, two, two pieces. You know, but, yeah. uh, but, but, you know, it's just, it was just kind of like an exercise. And mm -hmm. it just is, was fun. It took me about an hour. And, and that's kind of what you're doing. And the cool thing is that it's like having an accountability buddy. 
Exactly. So you know? it's the whole point is like we're all going to be doing this. Whatever you do, you don't have to even use the prompt, right? Like you could just depart the text entirely and do something totally yeah. different and show me that. Um, but we'll come together on Wednesdays and Fridays and talk about, you know, how it's going and what we did and what we learned and ask you, you'll have a chance to ask me questions and get answers and how would you do this? And I, yeah, brainstorm, you know, brainstorm, yeah. exactly. And then on Fridays, the prompt will be a workshop little more, it. You have workshop, to workshop it. it, the prompt will be a little more involved so that it gives you something to kind of, you know, think about over yeah. the weekend well and design skill challenge design skill challenge yeah. right so exactly. i know i know a lot of people that are kind of they've, they've had a lot of basic classes and they're sort of at an intermediate level and you just sort of like stall and it's mm -hmm. kind of like what do i do now what do i do with all this stuff i've got i've got all these pieces i've got all these parts mm -hmm. and i have no idea what to do with it all now that i've learned how to solder what do i do next right and this is a great place to sort of use as a springboard and exactly. bounce ideas around and be able to talk about, you know, design and things right. like that a little bit. Get too. you excited yeah. about doing something, yeah. you know, combining skills, like combining stuff from various different classes. I found actually the solution to my problem when, with my spark that I was working on was to take a piece of information from a filigree class that I took with an, another jeweler here in Seattle. And, and it was a perfect solution. I'm like, was it Peggy Foy? It was Peggy Foy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and I will tell the people in the studio sparks class what what that was because it's yeah. great. It's a really good tip, and I really it was like, dang, this is great. Yeah. It's a nice crossover, so yeah. you can get that kind of nice cross pollination between different um, different classes, which is fun. Well, so. and also um, we've got um, the in August we've got a stone setting series, right? So you can sort of um, I was doing it as like one long class. And not everybody needs all the stone setting right. things. So it's a really nice way to be able to sort of come in and, you know. Pick and choose. A la carte. Yeah. It's like stone setting a la carte. Stone cat. Yeah, exactly. You so can you can do prongs or want. tube setting. And a lot of them, um, a lot of these two are really good challenges if you have not worked with, um, you know, you know how to solder and you know how to do mm -hmm. that, but you don't have the stone settings. And like I said, bezel setting is hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Flush setting, you don't have to solder. Mm-mm drill a hole. <laughs> All right. It's right. easy. And well, tube setting. Easier. And tube setting. And tube setting is one of those things too, that it's like basically you're using tube to make a, a bezel around mm -hmm. your stone. And, but there's so many other things that you can do with tubing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people learn like bezels and tubes right off the bat, but seriously, tubes are awesome. You can flare them. You can cut them. You can drill into them. You can make prongs out of them. There's so many things you can do with tubes. And not just round ones, but square ones. Mm. I know, right? I know. You know what? You can take a round tube and you can make it into an oval tube, too. You can. You can do that. It's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. So, tube setting. We're going to be doing that. Uh, uh, the 11th of August. August 11th. is coming up. Yep. And then you're doing prongs and, pedestals, prongs and pedestals on the 18th. And, oh, I'm oh. doing the stamps and punches again. So, I had done the Make Your Mark class, how to make a stamp. Um, so with tool steel, something that will last yeah, for a right. while. So I'm going to show you how to carve the stamp and then also how to, um, temper it, how to, how to oh, yeah. anneal, how to, you have to harden it and then temper it so that it will have a tip that right. won't shatter. Right. So, um, that's so a lot cool. of fun. It's really, it's really fun to make your own stamps and make your own, yeah. you can make your own well, maker's mark. It is exactly right. And you can just make your own like unique designs mm -hmm. as well. Exactly. So if you're doing like decorative edges around things like mm, bezels. Or a ring Same. or whatever. Yeah, you can make your own punches and stamps that, exactly. that are unique and wonderful and, and you, you know. Right. So. And that are will last a lifetime. That's right. You can Your grandchildren can inherit them and they can still <laughs> be like, them. I don't know. My, I had a crazy aunt. I don't know what she was doing. <laughs> she left uh, me all these punches. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, take a look at the, the website, littlemetalfoxes.com, and mm -hmm. it has our, our list of things. We do like to make sure that you guys know we have our materials list in front so you guys can mm -hmm. see what kinds of things you have to have to um to take the class before right. you sign up for that's it. not behind the paywall so right. you know you can see in advance what you will need yeah. and please if you have any questions about any of that email just us. email us at i'm julia at littlemetalfoxes.com or you can email info at littlemetalfoxes.com right 
um, yeah, any questions, so, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. And there's there's great resources, and we've partnered with wonderful people like Peppy Tools um, and, Lion Punch, and Lion Punch Forge and Rio Grande mm -hmm. to and Seattle Findings and, and and our list of resources there. So we have discounts for anyone taking the classes with us as well. So it makes it a little bit more accessible we have, uh, and affordable. We, even, we have a rewards program too. So if you take oh, more than true. one class, you yeah. earn points. If you, you Tell a friend. You and both if, get and discounts. You get, yes, you, you, we have a referral program. So, you know, if you if you bring a friend, then you both get a discount. Yeah. And then you also get a discount. You, you, you earn points that you can redeem for discounts. Right. So, yeah. So I think that's I think that's our, our talk for the night. Indeed. Our tool tips for the our, night. Our solder. So, yeah. Experiment with some solder pads and uh, surfaces. Let us know what what works for you and what you like. And uh, if you have recommendations for, for surfaces that we didn't mention, we'd love to hear it. Um, so, and share that with other people. So you can put that in the comments uh, later on. So thanks everybody. And Thank you. Have a great night. We'll see you later. Bye.